so excited to put this featherweight back together. And thankfully, it doesn't care if I work on it in my pajamas. I'm still recovering from a surgery, but I'm allowed to do this, and I am so grateful for that. I took my time cleaning the parts on this machine and polishing the body. I was thankful to have a little project like that. Now I finally feel like putting it back together, so that's what I'm going to do. The rock shafts, the feed fork, and the feed connecting rod were the last parts to come off the machine, and they'll be the first ones to go back in. First, I'm oiling the centers before I slide them back into the machine. It's important to note that they're different lengths. The long ones go on one side and the shorter ones go on the other. can go ahead and put the rock shaft in. At this point, I'm just trying to get it in the machine. Then I'll have to adjust the centers so that the placement of the rock shaft and the feed rock shaft are correct. This means that I will reinstall the feed dogs and the needle plate early on to make sure that everything is aligned properly. Before I put the set screws in for the centers, I check to make sure that the flat spots are where I can see them. I'm going to have to adjust these, but I do want to secure them for now. Now I can go ahead and insert the feed connecting rod. I'm not too concerned with the position of the eccentric screw just yet. I'll fix that once I start checking the placement of the feed dogs. I just wanna make sure that it's in there securely for now. Next is the feed fork and again, I'm not too worried about the placement of the eccentric screw just yet. I just want to get it connected. I just love to see everything moving just like it should. The 
The feed regulator goes in next. It's going to help me perfectly position the rock shafts inside the machine so the feed dogs fit right where they should inside the needle plate. I can install the feed dogs and I'm just going to temporarily lay the needle plate on top of them. I'm turning the hand wheel and I'm feeling and watching to see if the needle plate bumps up and down as the feed dogs move under it. If I screwed down the needle plate, I would only be able to hear this, but this way I can actually see it happening. When I see that movement, I know that my feed dogs are not properly aligned. Now I will go in and loosen the set screws for the centers and do those final tiny adjustments so that the feed dogs fit properly inside the needle plate. To center the feed dogs side to side in the needle plate, that's done by adjusting the position of the centers. To adjust how they move lengthwise within the needle plate, that's done by adjusting the eccentric screw. Now that I'm satisfied with how the feed dogs are aligned inside the needle plate, I can go ahead and set the height of them as well. This is the eccentric screw that sets the height of the feed dogs. Once I have the height properly set, I will tighten down the nut on the end so that I don't lose my setting.
Now the bobbin winding parts can go back on. And later, I was pleased to find that the school bell style tension bracket works just as well as all the others. Now I will put the hand wheel on so I can actually install the needle bar and presser bar. I think it just makes it a little bit easier. I'll have to take it back off when I get the motor on the machine and I want to put the belt on. Since these gears are going to be turning a lot while I install the other parts, I like to go ahead and get a layer of grease on them. Setting your machine up on the hand wheel is still the easiest way for me to install this screw on the thread take-up system. that flat spot is exactly what I need to see before I install the set screw for the thread take up. I made the decision to remove the presser bar lifter while I was cleaning the machine. Now I just need to tap it back in. It's important to make sure that you tap this in flush with the machine or you will have problems getting your tension pin releasing lever to work later. This comes out by tapping it out through the back and then tapping it back in through the front. That little pin is actually tapered and it only goes in one way.
I'm putting the set screw in for the presser bar, but I'm not too concerned about the position of the presser bar yet. Having the set screw in and holding the presser bar still is what helps me get the thread cutter back onto the presser bar, which is really kind of a pain. Now I can install the presser foot and set the height of the presser bar. You want to make sure that the feed dogs are in the lowest position when you do this. And if you have the little tool from the featherweight shop, it really helps you align the presser foot and set the height at the same time. I like to tighten the needle clamp screw just enough that the needle bar doesn't wiggle around while I'm setting the height. Once I get it perfect, I can go ahead and tighten it down all the way. Now I will remove the needle plate. This is so I can install the hook and make sure that I don't need to adjust the timing.
Once I have a needle in the machine, I'm going to turn the hand wheel very slowly the first couple turns. This is so I can see whether or not the needle is going to strike anywhere on the hook assembly. By watching the lower timing mark on the needle bar, I can tell the timing on this machine is perfect. If you look at the tension stud, you will notice there's a little cutout. It needs to be positioned in the center at the top. Then the tail on the inside of the tension spring is going to slide right into that cutout. The new wiring on the light is so much better than what was there before. I am just really excited to reinstall the light, the switch, and the motor, and finally turn on the machine. I restored the original foot controller to the machine as well, and it just feels appropriate to use it the first time I turn on the machine. I am really happy to see this motor is working perfectly.
With the belt installed, I can see that the stop motion feature works perfectly. Now I'm ready to reinstall all the covers, wind a bobbin, and start sewing. I can't really zero out the tension the same way I would with a tension assembly that has a number dial, but I can go by feel and I'll see if I got it right when I start sewing. I'm watching as the needle goes down, the hook catches the thread, and it glides over the hook assembly, making a perfect lock stitch. After sewing the first few stitches, I knew that I needed to tighten down the thumb screw at the top of the machine, increasing the pressure on the presser foot. After that, the stitches came out beautifully. I just have a huge smile on my face right now. These stitches are beautiful. The tension was very easy to adjust and it is working perfectly. Now I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting six stitches per inch at the longest stitch length. the bed extension reinstalled, this machine is finished. I just love how it turned out. It is such a special machine. After all of the time that I put into restoring the machine, I just could not resist using it for a little sewing project of my own. While I was working on it, I thought a lot about the next person who will get to use this machine, and I know how much joy it's going to bring them. For me, it got me through a hard time of recovery, and I'm so thankful that I had something like this to keep me busy. The whole process took me days, but I was happy to shorten up this video just for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed following along, and I just want to thank you again for watching. I'll see you again 
really soon.